search up the best college football games to go to, the Penn State Whiteout always tops the list. State College is only 10 hours from Chicago, and you know I'm not allergic to driving, so of course I make it happen. The Nittany Lions get the W, but the tickets aren't going to pay for themselves. The nearest casino is Rivers back in Pittsburgh. Let's get those cards in the air. At Rivers, the 2-5 game is a $2,000 to $1,000 buy-in. I'm in for the max. First hand of the night, I look down at King Queen Offsuit from the button. There's one limper over to the cutoff who raises it up to $30. I put in the call and the big blind does as well, bringing in also the limper. So yes, we're going four ways to the flop with King Queen Offsuit. And yes, occasionally I will be raising this hand, but I decided to call in this moment and let's go off to a flop. The flop comes jack, nine, deuce with two hearts. I check my cards and see that I have the queen of hearts in my hand. The action checks over to the cutoff who bets out into the field for $50. Now I have a gut shot to the straight. I have a backdoor flush draw and I have two over cards. So you know I'm not gonna go anywhere for two measly green chips. I toss those in the middle and it also gets the attention of the limper. He puts in the call and we are off to the turn. The turn card now comes the three of hearts and the middle position checks it over to the cutoff. I picked up a backdoor heart draw, which is interesting, but the cutoff continues betting this time for $125. It's a pretty chunky bet and I still just have all my draws, although I picked up a little bit of equity on this turn, so I could consider putting in the call here and evaluating on the river. But I look to make a disciplined fold here when the cutoff bets into all the opponents on multiple streets. It's likely he has a strong hand. He could have anything from pocket jacks to pocket deuces. He could have made a flush already or he could have jack nine. So I'm not too sure if it's worth it for me putting in $125. The only caveat is I would be in position the rest of the hand. So that would have been nice. But I muck my cards here and I guess we won't see what the cutoff had. Next hand of the night, we look down at pocket tens from the small blind. The $10 straddles on and I raise it up to $40. The big blind puts in the call. He's somewhat of an action player, although he watches the vlog, so I'm not going to say much more than that. He was really fun to play with and definitely a nice guy. We're going to go heads up out of position to a flop, which comes ace, 10, eight, bang, we flop middle set. Really great spot to be in, and I decide to lead out into the opponent for $50. And he doesn't wave the white flag just yet. He puts in the call, bringing in the deuce of spades on the turn, and I'm not slowing down. There's draws galore out there. There's nine jack. There's king queen having a draw. There's obviously the front door heart draw. And the deuce of spades brings in a backdoor spade draw as well. So I need to continue betting, and I decide to fire out for $150. Expecting to get a lot of calls, expecting to get some folds. This time the opponent puts in the 150 and we're off to a river card in a decently sized pot already and it comes the nine of diamonds. So although it doesn't bring in the heart or the spade draw, it kind of connects the board in the sense that Jack Queen got there if he wanted to call with some sort of gutter. And I guess seven six also got there, but that'd be pretty hard to have as well. Considering the fact that a lot of draws missed, I think checking puts me in a spot to call down a lot of bluffs, whereas betting just folds all those out. And if he had a hand like ace king or ace queen, he's probably going to bet this anyways. So I'm not too sure I'm missing out on a lot of value and I really like my check here. When I check, it does induce him to bet. He fires out for $310. And I'm not just going to call this. I end up counting out my stack and I realize I only have $175 more in my stack for $485 total. I can get value from a lot of those hands I just mentioned, like ace king, ace queen, ace 10 even, maybe even pocket eights or pocket deuces. So yes, I decide to go all in for $485 and he snap calls me. Uh-oh, what is he gonna show me this time? I turn over my set and he tables six, seven of hearts. So at first I think he missed the flush draw and then realized he backed into the straight. Yes, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. That's a straight for all you beginners out there. And I definitely feel like a beginner losing this massive pot to end the night. It's late in the morning already and I'm not in the mood to rebuy. I'm going to count my losses here. I get out of that game for zero, so a net loss of $1,000. Obviously, we can't make a vlog with just two hands, so I decide to drive my butt over to MGM Grand in Detroit on my way back to Chicago. And we hop into the 2-5 game for $1,000. First hand of this session, I look down at ace queen offsuit from under the gun plus one. Under the gun decides to raise it up to $20 and ace queen offsuit is definitely worthy of a three bet. I pop it up to 60 bucks and the player on my left decides to put in the cold call for $60. If I was to give him some advice, probably just four bet or fold in this spot. If he's calling, it probably narrows him down to a lot of pocket pairs like eights or nines that just feel bad folding, but also don't want to put more money in with a four bet. 
Under the gun also puts in the call. That means we are going three ways to a flop with ace queen. And ideally I would look to see a flop that comes like this, ace queen seven with two spades. Great, great board for us to see. There's some draws available, so I can definitely get some more money into this pot. Under the gun decides to check it over to me and there's 187 in the middle and I decide on a bet of 85 bucks for just under half the size of the pot. The other player gets out of the way, leaving it heads up with under the gun should he decide to put in $85 in the middle, which he doesn't, but he also doesn't fold. He actually check raises me to $225, a little 3x from that out of position player here. That's a little spicy. I'm blocking pocket aces and pocket queens. He could have my favorite hand pocket sevens, or he could have some assortments of random two pairs like a7 and queen7, or I think he might have some spade draws. So yeah, I'm definitely not going anywhere considering I'm beating a lot of those hands. Not too much more for me to put in the call and I do so and that brings us off to the turn in a $637 pot and the turn comes the four of clubs. Definitely not great seeing a black card peel off, but it's not a spade so this is actually a big blank and definitely a good spot for us to call another bet from under the gun. And that's what we're going to have to do when he decides to bet out for half pot of $300 into the $637 pot. When he check raises me on the flop and continues on the turn, sure he could have that set of sevens, but he's also going to continue this with a lot of his draws like king jack of spades, jack ten of spades, maybe ace ten with the ace of spades kind of thing. So yeah, I'm not going anywhere. You better believe I'm not folding this beautiful hand. But I look down at my stack and I only really have around $600 total. So if I call this 300 here and he's on a draw and then he misses on the river, he just checks it over to me and then folds. So I'd rather just get the money in now. If he's on a draw, great. If he has me beat with one of those few hands, also great for him. But I'm going to go all in for $600 and he doesn't waste any time before putting in the call. Just like that, we're playing an $1,800 pot here in Detroit. I hope the poker gods are on my side. The river card comes the seven of diamonds pairing the board, now giving me three pairs. I can only play five cards, so yes, I have aces and queens with a seven kicker. And the opponent turns over ace king of clubs. So just like that, we're gonna scoop that pot. For a second there, I thought I was chopping, but uh, no bueno for him, $1,800 coming my way. And I got a little bit of that money back from the uh, Pittsburgh disaster. I ended up playing for another hour after this, but the road trip takes a toll on me. I can't be playing till four or five in the morning, so I end up cutting my session short and cashing out for 1647, so a profit of $647 on the session. But still, we can't make a vlog after just three hands, so that means this vlog's going to yet another Midwest casino, and we make the few hour drive north to Onita Casino up in Green Bay. Can't believe I'm including a Green Bay casino on the vlog. I'm a huge Bears fan and uh, I don't know if you guys realize, but Green Bay and Chicago don't get along too well. Just ask Aaron Rodgers. Oh, although I can still take their chips at the table and get one back for the Bears. I'm into the 2-5 game for $1,000, but heads up, it's a 50% match the stack. So let's see if I get some more money on the table. First hand of the night, I'm on the button and I look down at King Jack of Spades. Under the gun decides to limp. That's a good sign for this table. The cutoff opens it up to $10 and so of course I put in the three bet to 30 bucks. We're gonna get called in both spots, the under the gun and cutoff both put in additional money and that brings us to a flop of King Jack four, bang, we flopped two pair. Already running good against these cheese heads, there's $100 in the middle and the action checks over to me because that's what they should do in flow. Check it over to the pre-flop razor and I decide to go for a half pot size bet of $45. When I bet out for $45, they both find a fold, and I'm gonna copy Aaron Rodgers when he said to the Bears, I own you. Moving right along, I have $1,000 in my stack. I'm on the button, few limps to my right, and he opens it up for $25. Not gonna be just calling, I put in the three bet to $80, and he now decides to go all in for 240 bucks. When everybody folds, I put in the snap call. Ace-King offsuit is a beautiful hand. We're gonna go to battle. Even if he has a pocket pair, it's pretty much a flip. That's what he shows. He shows Ethan's favorite hand, pocket fours. Hold up. Ethan, see what you're doing to the poker world? Making people play pocket fours. What am I doing complaining? That's a great hand for me to be up against here. We're off to a flip in a $500 pot. And of course, it doesn't help me out on the flop. It comes 10, 10, 6, followed by the nine of spades on the river. Oh boy, don't do it to me, dealer. And the river card comes the three of diamonds. So yeah, shipping that $500 pot over to the opponent doesn't feel too great, but uh, I guess I'm just giving back to the poker community. Little retribution incoming. I look down at pocket aces, the bullets. I'm in the small blind and the cutoff raises it up to $20. Great sign already. I decide to go for a three bet to $80. 
and uh, he folds his cards. He thought this would be a more interesting hand. Yeah, well, uh, I was hoping for that too, but we can't always get what we want. Okay, I wasn't able to make anything happen with pocket aces, so now I look down at queen jack offsuit from the cutoff, and I open it up to $15. Only the blinds are going to put in the call. We're three ways in position to a flop, which comes jack 9-5 with two spades. I have top pair and a backdoor spade draw and a backdoor straight draw. When the action checks over to me, I bet out for a little bit more than half pot for $25, and only the small blind puts in the call. That brings in the four of hearts on the turn, and the small blind now checks it over to me once again. Gotta continue going for value on this very draw heavy board. I decide to bet out now for half pot of $55, and once again, the small blind puts in the call, bringing us off to a river. River now comes in overcard. It's the king of hearts. Additionally, it brings in queen 10. So yeah, that now has me beat, although I do block that having the queen of hearts in my hand. He leads now for $80 in the actions on me. Strange line calling me on the flop and the turn only to lead out on the river. If he's bluffing here, it has to be a missed spade draw. If he has a value hand, it makes a little bit of sense leading out into me, making sure that I don't check behind. For instance, if he had a hand like jack nine, maybe pocket fives, pocket fours, or maybe a hand like king jack would definitely lead out here. So in the end, I'm sorry to bore you guys, but I actually decide to put in the fold here. Yeah, I could be putting in the 80 bucks and looking to bluff catch against those spade draws, but something in the moment told me to fold and that's what I decided to do, but no worries, we're gonna battle in this next hand with King-10 offsuit, I'm in the big blind. One limper to the button who raises it up to $20, the small blind puts in the call, and so I do as well. Sometimes I'll be three betting the button open here, but uh, that's not what I decided to do. I put in the call and the limper does as well, bringing us four ways to a flop, which comes 10-10-4, bang! We flop three of a kind. Glad I decided to put in that 20 bucks now because I have three of a kind with a great kicker, only losing to a few hands like 10-4, pocket fours, and ace-10. The small blind now leads out into the field for $20 and I could be going for a raise. Instead, I just decided to put in the call. If I raise, it pretty much tells the table I have a 10 in my hand, or if I call here, I could have a bunch of random hands like maybe a four in it. I could have some pocket pairs like eights, sevens, or sixes. So yeah, I look to disguise my hand and just put in the call. The button puts in the call as well. That means we're three ways to the turn, which comes the Jack of Diamonds. Small blind now slows down and checks it over to me, and I'm not gonna have this go check through, so I decide to bet out for $55, which is a little bit more than a third the size of the pot, and the button now goes for a raise all the way up to $200. Definitely a weird line calling the flop only to raise the turn. Could he have a hand like jack 10? Yeah, I'm sure he could have that hand. He could also have pocket jacks because remember, he was the one who raised it up to $20 pre-flop. So we could credit him for having that hand as well. When he raises it up to $200, I'm not thinking about folding my hand just yet. Although alarm bells are going off in my head and I'm definitely putting in the call on this turn to proceed with caution on the river. So yeah, the pot is ballooned up to $540 and we're looking to see a clean river. I'm not really sure what that looks like, but the six of hearts peels off on the river and it seems pretty safe. Obviously, I'm gonna check it over to him when he raises the turn. That's what I decide to do and now I hear the two words that I didn't wanna hear, all in. Yes, that cheesehead decided to jam all in covering me for around $450. And I think about my option for a second. It's not a snap call in the spot because sure he could still have pocket fours, jack 10, pocket jacks. So yeah, not a snap call, but in the end I make what I think is the right decision and I decide to put in the call for 450 which represents the rest of my chips. Lucky for us, few. He turns over king 10 of clubs. So yeah, we're gonna end up chopping that pot, but definitely a sweat and uh, I didn't really like that spot by the river. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit the subscribe button. A crazy amount of you, 59.8% of you watching this video are not subscribed, and guess what? I'm gonna be Santa this year. I'm giving away free money on Christmas, and the only way you can be eligible to win that is by hitting the subscribe button. And it's not a shabby amount too. It might be up to $3,000. Hit that subscribe and let's get back into the hands. All right, going to battle with a fun hand here. I looked down at 5-4 of diamonds and there's a few limps over to me and I decided to raise it up to $20. Yeah, your boy's getting a little frisky here with the five high. No worries though, we're gonna get two callers. That means we're off to a flop three ways. We see a pretty good flop for us from the small blind of a7-6 with two hearts. There's one diamond out there, so we have an open-ended straight draw and the backdoor diamond draw to go along with it. I'm out of position to two opponents, so I'm usually going to be doing a lot of checking, and that's no different here. I check it over to the big blind, who checks it over to the button, who wants to take a free card, and we're going to get one. The king of clubs peels off on the turn. 
When the action checks through on the flop, it's unlikely that any of them have an ace. It's also unlikely they have two pairs or sets, given the fact there's a lot of draws out there, like 8-9, obviously the front door heart draw. So I look to go for a bet here and hopefully steal the pot with my 5 high. I bet out for $35. Only the button puts in the call and that brings us to a river card which isn't so great it comes the ace of clubs because it pairs the top card. I say it's not so great because when I bet out on the turn I'm representing myself having an ace in my hand but the ace on the river makes it a little bit less likely and makes my story a little bit less credible. But don't tell me that I decided to bet out for $65 and the button thinks about it for a second before mucking his cards. Phew we get the job done with our five high. And when the dealer's not giving you the right cards, it feels pretty good to get the bluff through nonetheless. All right, ace king of hearts now, a beautiful, beautiful hand. I'm in the cutoff and there's a few limps over to me. Naturally, I'm gonna raise it up to $20 and the big blind and the player on my right both put in the call. That means we're going three ways to the flop in position. Beautiful. What's not beautiful though is the flop. It comes nine, five, deuce, rainbow and the action checks over to me. I'm not really gonna have too many of the sets here. For instance, pocket deuces and pocket fives are pretty much excluded from my range at this point. I can really only have pocket nines, so given the fact that they could have more sets than me and I have just ace high at this moment, I decide to check behind, bringing in a great card, the 10 of hearts on the turn. I still have my two over cards, but now I picked up the nut flush draw, and the action checks to me once again. Not going to be letting this get checked through. I'm going to try to get some random hands to fold like pocket fours, pocket threes, maybe hand like ace five or ace deuce. I think I can get to fold. If not on the turn, definitely if I fire on the river. So I decided to bet out for $30 into the $70 pot, which is a little bit less than half the size. The big blind now puts in the call and the player on my right decides to check raise up to $130, a sneaky move by the hijack. Of course though, he might think that I'm going to be folding this spot with a lot of my random hands like ace-king offsuit or ace-king suited, that's just not hearts, but uh, little does he know I have ace-king of hearts. Now the question is, do I go for another raise in the spot or do I just put in the call in position and see what he does on the river? I think that's a much better option. No sense in bloating the pot here with just ace high and a draw. So given the fact that he's letting me know that he has a good hand, I'm just going to call here in position and the uh, big blind, he gets out of the way. The river card now comes the deuce of spades and the hijack does not slow down. Bets out for $125, which is such a small bet. It smells like value. Could I ever call here with my ace king high? Sure, I might beat some hands like ace queen, but what ace queens are gonna be check raising the turn? Pretty much none of them. So for that reason, I end up finding a fold in this spot and it feels pretty painful to do so because I had such a nice hand by the turn. Right, last hand of the night, last chance to get these cheese heads here from Green Bay. I'm in the big blind and I decide to raise it up to $20 and we're gonna get called in two spots. That means we're going three ways to the flop, which comes nine four deuce rainbow. Pretty great spot for us. We have an over pair. It's board isn't too connected. Sure, they could have the random sets, but I'm gonna be betting here until they tell me otherwise. So I fire out for $35 and both players put in the call. So yeah. Spot's growing at a decent rate. I'd love for more money to get in. And let's see what the turn card peels off. It comes the 10 of spades. So I guess 9-10 now gets there, but we can't be worried about that just yet. Gotta keep betting until they tell me otherwise. That's the rule. So uh, I decide to fire out for $115. One player down and the other player follows the leader and folds as well. We're gonna take down that nice little pot to end the session. But unfortunately, I ended up cashing out for $711. So a net loss from this session of $289. All right, guys, that wraps up this little three-part video from three different places. First, we went to Pittsburgh, then we went to Detroit, then we went to Oneida up in Green Bay. Ended up booking a $642 loss across all three properties, partially due, in fact, to the uh, Pittsburgh vlog, which is, uh, we won't talk about that in the future, but if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Definitely subscribe. I'm giving away, hopefully, $3,000 on Christmas. So you don't want to miss out on that. You got to subscribe to be eligible. Appreciate all the support, you guys. If you like these types of videos, drop a comment down below. Good luck on the felt, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.